Hey friends, how's it going? Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope that you guys are doing super well. It's clone time, baby. Wish I could just clone myself, you know, have an extra little me who goes in and films the videos and stuff. Or no, an extra me that edits the videos. Yes, but no, no, we're not talking about that kind of clone. We're not talking about clone wars, Star Wars, none of that. We're talking about clone fragrances. You know what a clone is. It's where a brand sees another brand that's doing really well and they take their intellectual property and they make it their own property. They, uh, they just copy it, you know, change it up a little bit. That's what we're doing. So seven clone fragrances today. And these are strong boys. These ones have got good projection, good longevity. They last a long time. Though to be fair, a lot of clone fragrances do. Like they pack a punch a lot of times. Well, let's go ahead and jump into this. So let's take a look at some clones that are not gonna cost you all that much money, but that are going to potentially choke out your enemies or really just anybody you come across. All right, dudes, let's go. Let's do Afnan first. Supremacy in Oud. That's one thing you're gonna see a lot of in this video, fragrances that have Oud in the name. It's almost like a prerequisite that if you have a clone house or a clone fragrance that you throw Oud in the name, even if it's really not even all that Oudy. Something about that, you know? They just go, hey, if we put that this is Oud, people will think the quality is through the roof. So everything is Oud from now on, everything. What about that fresh summer fragrance? Yeah, that's Oud too, baby. So off non-supremacy and Oud, this is a clone of Oud for Greatness from Initio Parfums. And that's a loud fragrance too. I mean, that's a strong fragrance that'll choke out anybody near you. And this one is up there too. This is probably not the most well-known clone, well-known clone of that fragrance, mainly because it doesn't try to ape the bottle. I mean, there are other clones out there like Oud for Glory, which is probably a little bit more well-known. And the reason I think that is more well known is because just look at it. That's taking the Dollar Tree, Dollar Store version of Oud for Greatness to the next level. When you go ahead and just do that, and you can see that it's, oh. I own Oud for Greatness and Oud for Glory, so I mean, technically I could be holding a bottle up, but this is just easier. If you're looking for a cheap version of Oud for Greatness, this is your best bet, period. And as far as Offnon goes, their Supremacy line is really solid almost the whole way through from top to bottom. Good performance, good quality, good packaging, the whole thing. This is the only one I'm gonna mention from the line, but if you're into clone fragrances, make sure you check those out. They're actually surprisingly good. Little more Oud. Next up, Amir All Oud Intense. Now, admittedly, I am not the biggest clone dude in the world. I have a decent amount of clone fragrances. I was gonna say a lot, but compared to some people, I really don't. And I'll try to scoop fragrances up when people point them out to me and say, hey man, I really would love you to cover this or that or this or that. I'll try to get them, but outside of people letting me know by sending me an email or something, I don't really keep up a huge amount with what's going on clone wise. I kind of rely on you guys to an extent to point me to what you want me to cover for you. <laughs> and this is one of those fragrances that I heard some people talk about, heard some whispers, went ahead and got it, and it is very good. This is an alternative to buy the fireplace. As vanilla, oud, sandalwood, and sugar, but it's not really an oudy fragrance. Like I said, more by the fireplace turned into a clone fragrance and amped up a little bit as far as the performance goes. So the oud here is gonna be more that little bit of a homey sort of slightly smoky woodiness that you would get from by the fireplace as opposed to more of a fecal poopy smelling oud, which I'm sure a lot of you out there appreciate. I think the packaging is a little bit ugly personally, but the fragrance itself, very nice. And the quality here, once again, quite good. Now we've got my newest purchase of this whole bunch. It's from Haramain. It's Amber Oud Carbon Edition. This is one of those circumstances where Oud in the name makes no sense. The line is Amber Oud. So this bottle style of Haramain, that's your Amber Oud style. The Carbon Edition though, is basically a clone of Green Irish Tweed. Yeah, I know. When you think of Green Irish Tweed, the first thing that pops into your head, Amber and Oud. Oh wait, no. Green, aromatic, and fresh. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, that's what this is. Green Irish Tweed. Carbon addition makes a little bit of sense because when I smell it, it does have almost a slight metallic tinge to it. 
So in that sense, maybe carbon addition sort of halfway, if you stretch your brain into the brink of destruction, makes sense. The Amber Rood, though, absolutely does not. Bergamot, lavender, sea notes, rosemary, oak moss, some of the notes in this fragrance. It does smell like a higher quality take on Green Irish Tweed compared to some of the other clones out there. And it also has a big step up in performance compared to some of the other ones out there. Do be aware though that it does have that bit of a metallic sharpness. To me, it's not as smooth as Green Irish Tweed, but if you're looking for a Green Irish Tweed alternative that has good performance, check that one out. Oh, an obvious one, La Yukawam from Rasasi. This is the original La Yukawam, not one of the multitude, well, maybe not multitude, but one of the decent number of flankers out there. This is an alternative to Tuscan leather from Tom Ford, and it does pack quite a punch, quite a wallop, which is good because Tuscan leather packs a wallop itself. So if you have an alternative to that, you're gonna want it to have that performance. Not many people are gonna be happy if you get an alternative to a very powerful fragrance and then the alternative is wimpy and crappy and pukey. Oh, lame. Nobody wants that. That's stupid. It's like Sparta back in the day. You take your weak alternatives and you throw them off a cliff. Only it's much more acceptable to do that with fragrances than uh, with babies. Raspberry, leather, saffron, and wood, some of the notes in the fragrance. Good amount of sweetness in the top, helps offset that leather that comes in pretty strongly, even from the get-go. La Yukawam has been heralded as one of the higher quality alternatives or clones on the market since it came out for a very good reason. The stuff smells amazing. It also does carry a high price tag compared to some of the other cheaper alternatives out there, but in this circumstance, you get what you pay for, so it's okay. Now, one that does not get talked about quite as often, it's from Armoff. It is called Legacy, and it is spelled interestingly. Armoff is known for doing weird, goofy cornball things with their presentations, though, so it's kind of par for the course. And I gotta say, this bottle, I hate it. Super ugly. Maybe some of you out there would like it. It looks kind of like a uh, luggage in a way. I don't know. It does flip up. So that's uh, interesting. And with the magnetic closure as well. Wow. Lavender, rosemary, cedar, and sandalwood. This one, similar to Platinum Ego East from Chanel. So even though it's not a clone of a niche fragrance, it is still a clone of a fragrance that's fairly expensive because Chanel's you'll basically never find discounted. And as this is an alternative to Platinum Ego East, it is likely going to appeal more to guys middle-aged and older because it does have that throwback style to it. It's very gentlemanly, sophisticated, grown up and mature. Not a heavy handed, sweet, youthful bomb, not a clubbing scent. Fantastic in the office though, any kind of formal situation, obviously it's going to absolutely kill it. Platinum Ego East is going to be a little bit smoother for me. So do keep that in mind. It's not an exact one-to-one -one replica of Platinum Ego East, but for a lot of people, this one performs better than the Chanel, lasts longer, actually lasts a really long time and has good projection as well. So if you are a big fan of Platinum Ego East, if you want something cheaper than that, that you can spray on and go and not even think about because it is much easier to find, locate and pay for on the cheap, then check this one out. Then we have Midnight Oud. Yes, bringing the Oud back once again. This is an alternative or a clone of Interlude Man by Amouage, which is really well known for being one of the most powerful fragrances Amouage has ever done, and they've done some powerful ones. So if that's toward the top, you know it's uh, packing some nuclear heat. And this is one of those fragrances that is just overtly, blatantly telling you, yes, we are taking what Interlude did and we are redoing it. Yes, that's what we're doing. Sometimes you'll get fragrances like this one, like Legacy, where you look at it and you go, I you, I don't know what that is. What is, I don't know. Other times you get this. And actually, I think for clone houses, I kind of prefer this, where they're just letting you know straight up, hey, this is what it is. If that's what you want, come and get it. Because it can be annoying with clone houses, clone fragrances, where you buy something and maybe you're expecting one thing and then it's something completely different. It makes no sense at all. Because sometimes you'll have clone fragrances that are done up to look like Baccarat Rouge 540 or in that style. And then they do smell like Baccarat Rouge 540 and so it makes sense. Other times they'll be done up to look like it should be a BR540 fragrance. 
or cologne fragrance, then you get it in and it's something completely different that has nothing to do with BR540. And that's kind of a pain in the butt, especially for guys out there who maybe are looking for things who uh, don't know exactly what all these clone fragrances are. It can be confusing. But Midnight Oud, just check out the presentation. Just look at this box, right? It is a complete knockoff. And surprisingly, it's a really good one. Very, very, very solid. Got a decent amount of hype, even though the bottle itself and maybe the box looks a little cheesy, especially when you compare it to the Amouage, the quality is there. Well, when I say the quality is there, I mean the quality of the fragrance, not the packaging. And I talked about Offnon earlier, the Supremacy line, they have an alternative to Interlude in that line also. If you wanna go with the highest end one, maybe go with the Supremacy, but Midnight Dude here, very good as well. So it's got that oregano in the opening. Some people are gonna be a little bit off put by that. I actually like it. Yeah, I kind of grew to like it, you could say. But some people don't, some people don't dig that. You've also got Oud in here, you've got Olibanum, a bunch of resins, kind of an incense -y feel, smoky feel. You've got leather as well. Quite a powerful fragrance, gonna be more of a wintertime scent. But yeah, Midnight Oud. You're looking for an alternative to Interlude Man? Check out the Midnight. Now, we have arrived to the final fragrance, and this is a very obvious one, but I feel like you just kind of, kind of got to do it. You know, you got to ride it out. It's from our moth. Club de Nuit Intense Man. This is the pure parfum that I have in my hand, but that's really just because I grabbed it first. The Eau de Toilette is the one that kind of popped into my head first. The original CDNIM, big time popular Aventus clone. Everybody knows about it. The opening, a little bit harsh. It's got this lemony kind of cleaner feel to it, this chemical kind of undertone that can really be off-putting, very synthetic in the initial opening. Once it settles though, smooths out a lot, performs like a monster. People are gonna be able to smell it easily as you move around or they get near you. And it's a big compliment beast. No breakdown wise, I mean, you're you're basically looking at events here. Yeah, lemon, pineapple, birch, vanilla, musk, black currant, the whole deal. I actually just did a review on Club de Nuit Intense Man Pure Parfum, this bottle right here. Uh, they're really just kind of coming out with flankers now, trying to ride that hype train as far as they can possibly take it. You've got the original, the limited edition, the Eau de Parfum, the Pure Parfum, the Perfume Oil, you got like hair products and all kinds of other junk. But there is a reason Club de Nuit Intense Man is so popular. And that's because it gives you great bang for your buck. The performance is there, the price is there, versatility is there, people love it outside that opening. And so we're gonna end with that one. Club de Nuit Intense Man. So there we go, seven of the stronger clone fragrances on the market that I currently own. Yeah, I don't have any Duas, I don't have any Alexandrias. I know that they're very, very popular, but there's so many of them out there. I wouldn't even know where to start, frankly. And my idea of having a good time is not dropping $800 or something to buy a whole bunch of clones from Dua and Alexandria. That actually sounds like a good recipe for depression. All right, guys, that's gonna do it. I'm gonna head out of here. Thank you for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.